Are you looking for an athletic scholarship? You're in the right place. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, the longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. We're here to help your family navigate the recruiting road all the way to an athletic scholarship. He's a recruiting expert and a dad of a D1 athlete and a newly committed high school athlete that just received an athletic scholarship. He's got a wealth of experience to share. Here's Recruit Me CEO, Brent Hanks. Welcome to episode 282 of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I hope you are having a great Christmas break. Please enjoy your time with your family and away from school and away from work. Last year I did some episodes that catered to the holiday season, but this year's episodes are not as holiday related. Last week I had a great guest and interview. Episode 281 was an introduction to Wayne Woolsey, the owner and CEO of QR Recruiter. Please go back and listen to the interview and go to qrrecruiter.com to see more on this new and unique recruiting resource. This week's episode, episode 282, is myth number three about athletic scholarships. Myth number three is, I can trust everything the coaches say and promise during the recruiting process. The truth from the Recruit Me 3.0 athletic scholarship system is, coaches realize that not all recruits will choose their college. Therefore, the coaches must over-recruit. They talk to more prospects than they have spots. Some have a tendency to overpromise and overstate too. And the reality, once you enroll, is not always what was presented in an attempt to recruit you. So be careful. Ask questions. Try to get to know the coach's character. Check into the coach by talking to friends and coaches who may know him or her. Find out about his or her reputation. And if you can, talk with some current athletes on the team to get their take. This myth, myth number three, is one of ten myths about athletic scholarships that are found in the Recruit Me 3.0 athletic scholarship system. I encourage you to go to recruit-me.com backslash system and get more information on the Recruit Me 3.0 system. The link to the holiday special is listed in the show notes. Myth number three, I can trust everything the coaches say and promise during the recruiting process. This sounds like, since I say that it is a myth, that all coaches are liars. The truth, as it is brought out, points out that, number one, most coaches have to over-recruit because not every recruit says yes or makes grades or actually end up enrolling at that school. Number two, coaches may over-promise or tell a recruit things that don't work out in the future. Let's dive into some of the truths and realities of recruiting. I do not want anyone to think that I am saying that college recruiters are liars. College coaches, like you do with them, Tell recruits all the good points about their program and their college. Like myself, coming from a sales background of new and used cars, I made sure to point out all the benefits of a car or a truck and how that particular vehicle helped fill a need or a want that a customer had. Just like cars, colleges and athletic programs have their faults. As a salesperson, whether it's cars or colleges, one doesn't blurt out all the faults that are present. If an athletic program has a lower graduation rate or a high player transfer rate, the coach is probably not going to highlight those in his or her recruiting presentation. Items like those are the reason Recruit Me teaches you to do research, especially during the sophomore and junior years of high school. If you do research on the programs you are interested in and you contact these programs and in turn you get to have communications either by email, text, or personally, You can ask specific questions about any faults or doubts you find during your research. Every program will have faults. Every program will have something that does not fit your needs or wants. If you ask the hard but important questions, that will help you find a good fit. Not a perfect fit, but a good fit that will help you make a decision your junior or senior year. A good decision athletically, academically, and socially that fits you the best. As a salesperson, my job was to attract prospective buyers. If I knew a hard-to-get Chevy Camaro was coming in and was going to be on the showroom in two weeks, I would contact past customers and prospective customers and let them know the Camaro was coming in. I would tell each customer about the Camaro and would invite them to the dealership to try to sell them or get them to commit to buy the car. As a salesperson, I am competing against all the other car dealerships in the area. And I'm competing against all the other salespeople at my dealership. I want to be the salesperson to get the sale. The sale is how I get paid, and that is my scoreboard. Now, I only have one special edition Camaro, and I am contacting many, a dozen or more, potential customers. 
Is this similar to recruiting a position on a team? A coach may need a running back, a left tackle, and a shutdown defensive back to fill his roster after graduation, a graduation that leaves holes in those spots. That coaching staff is going to identify 5 to 10 high school or junior college or transfer portal candidates and are going to contact those 5 or 10 potential student athletes and cater to all of them with letters, emails, social media posts, calls, unofficial and official visits. The coach and the coaching staff is making a pitch and probably the same pitch to all the recruits. 5 to 10 pitches for one position. Each candidate is given the same spiel. The coach will tell the recruit that he or she is their priority, that he or she will get an opportunity to play, and he or she will get their favorite uniform number or locker. All of these are true, and all of these may come true. But I, as a salesperson, told every potential buyer that the Camaro would get 30 miles a gallon. I can't control how the customer will drive the car. The customer may drive it by not taking off fast at a stoplight and by not seeing how fast they can get from home to work. Thus, they may get the 30 miles a gallon. But the Camaro driver may also like to race off the line at the stoplight. And with that change of the mile per gallon variable, they may end up getting only 25 miles a gallon. The same with a recruit. Promises are made by coaches, but variables are different for all recruits. Some of the variables are in control of the recruit, and some are not. A change in how the recruit prepares, a change in competition of opponents or other teammates, a change in coaching staff, or maybe even a worldwide pandemic. Who knew? The whole point is that coaches will over-recruit to fill a position or positions on their team. They have a closing ratio just like I had in sales. I learned the more prospects I had, the more likely I was to get the sale. And the coaches know they need a certain number of prospects to fill one spot. Prospects that are high on a coach's list can go away from that college for many, many different reasons. They can go away because the prospective recruit got another offer, or they decided to stay closer to home, or go to a smaller school, or go to a higher or lower division of play, or he or she can decide they liked another program or a coach better. Academics can even change a student's decision. Sometimes, because of this function of recruiting 5 to 10 players for one or two positions, a college coach sets a deadline for a recruit to make a commitment. Sometimes these deadlines are real, and sometimes the deadline is not real. A deadline to commit is sometimes a way to get a decision quicker, and a high school student athlete can feel pressured. Luckily, in our family's two recruiting experiences, the deadline was not an issue. Sutton was given three offers, and the only possible pressure that I can think of One of the coaches texted Sutton to let him know that the program had two of the five scholarship offers left. We felt this was good communication, not a pressure tactic, because of the two good visits we had with their coaching staff. A parent of a current college volleyball player told me about his daughter's deadline of an offer to one school. After a visit on campus, the school offered the daughter a scholarship, and the daughter, the recruit, told the coaches that she had another visit scheduled at another school. That visit was in five days, so she would not commit till after she made that future visit that she had previously scheduled. The first offering school said they needed an answer the next day. She again said there would be no decision until after the pre-scheduled visit in five days. So when she made no commitment the next day, the school that had set the deadline recontacted the recruit after three days, two days before her pre-scheduled visit, and demanded a commitment or the offer would be pulled and given to another recruit. This school was one of her top choices, but the pressure and what she felt was disrespectful to her wishes made her not commit to that pressuring college, and she went on to visit with her pre-scheduled visit. She has now been a four-year starter at a D1 volleyball program, and a first-team all-conference performer, and a leader in kills in the nation. She has graduated and will start her graduate classes and play her graduate year. Some coaches take chances by setting a deadline for a student-athlete to commit. And it does get the recruit to commit, and sometimes it doesn't, and may push that recruit away. Now, there is a time for a deadline, but please have a plan that works for your timeline and an understanding of where teams and coaches might be. So coaches at all levels are recruiting or courting more players than they have spots. If they don't recruit 5 to 10 players for one or two spots, then they could come up short on players to fill those spots. This is the same as you, the recruit. You need to have 10, 20, maybe even 30 colleges on your list, knowing that you are only going to attend one college. 
Another part of recruiting is that coaches tell recruits that that recruit is their top recruit and will play shortstop for the team their freshman year or be the main wide receiver target when they get on campus. Meanwhile, the coach is saying the same thing to two or three other recruits or even five to ten recruits. Now, is this wrong? No, the coach is only going to sign one of those players. The coach feels that the recruit is his future, shortstop or wide receiver. A majority of coaches don't use pressure or overpromising tactics. A majority will tell you what their plans are for you, especially if you ask directly. You can ask, Coach, how do you see me contributing my freshman year in your program? When you ask, be ready for the smoke, like, you're great, you'll play day one, you're our number one recruit. Also be ready for a straightforward answer from the college coaches. Are you ready to hear that you are not the top recruit? Are you ready to hear that the school wants you to walk on? Are you ready to hear that you need to improve your speed or your strength? Pay attention to these coaches that are straightforward with you. Parker, my oldest son, is now a senior at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. Every Division II or NAIA school that he talked to really played him up and told him how he would be their top pitcher coming in his freshman year. But when Parker talked to Division I baseball programs, he was hit a little differently by their recruiting pitches. He was told he needed to get bigger and stronger. He was told many times that he didn't throw hard enough and needed to get his fastball from 83 miles an hour to 86 or 87 miles an hour. And if he did that, they would relook at him. Parker was a junior in high school and was 6'1 and weighed 160 pounds. Parker had great high school stats and many awards for his junior high school season. He had a great ACT score and GPA, but his fastball wasn't hitting the mile per hour number that some D1 schools wanted for a left-handed pitcher. What was funny was that Parker and I did research on some of these programs, and most of them didn't have a lefty that threw 87 miles an hour, even as a senior in college. Parker then found a fit at Northwestern. Coach Reynolds, the then pitching coach and now the head coach, told Parker that they, Northwestern, would get Parker from the 83-mile-an-hour fastball to an 87-mile-an-hour fastball. Parker is now 6'2 and 195 pounds and can hit 90 to 91 miles per hour on his fastball. Parker took the straightforward, but what we thought was not solid, critical information to heart and found a coach and a program that saw what his potential was going to be and not what he just was as a high schooler. The schools that wrongly didn't project his growth and potential lost out. And that is why you make a school list and adjust your list as communications and research bear out what is best for you athletically and academically. So, myth number three about athletic scholarships. I can trust everything coaches say and promise during the recruiting process. It's not as negative as it initially sounds. Just know coaches and colleges do over-recruit and that college sports have higher stakes than your previous experiences in club and high school. So college coaches are not only in competition on the field, the court, or in the pool, but they are in competition in social media, in emails and text, and at the high school and club games and tournaments. Much like dating or even getting a job through job interviews, each side of recruiting tries to put forward their best foot. Each side is trying to make the best impression to gain each other's attention and be the final pick and start a two-year JUCO relationship or a four-year NCA or NAIA relationship. The main point I want to make in this episode is for you, the recruit, and you, the parents, to be ready and aware of how recruiting can be edgy and how recruiting is like a sales pitch. Enjoy the compliments and the attention you get during your recruiting process, but know some of the fluff promises made may not actually occur. Earlier in this podcast, I mentioned the Recruit Me 3.0 athletic scholarship system. I have a holiday special through the Christmas season. The Recruit Me 3.0 system is normally $127, but you can get it now for only $99. Plus, I will send you the recruiting checklist to help keep you on the right road during your journey. Go to recruit-me.com backslash system to get more information and click on the Get Access button to get started today. The Recruit Me 3.0 is a proven step-by-step solution with video tools, audio tools, and digital tools to help guide you through an effective and inexpensive DIY trip to get you an athletic scholarship. The Christmas break from school is a great time to get started or to recommit to your recruiting journey. You can get fast results with simple instructions. Remember, college coaches want to hear from you, the student athlete, not a canned email from an expensive recruiting mail. Go to recruit-me.com backslash system now. 
Another resource RecruitMe has is the Athletic Scholarship 24-Month Planner and Journal. Last week, I told you about some of the pages included in this 356-page book. You can get more info on the 24-Month Planner and Journal on the Recruit-Me.com website under the Resources tab. Back in episodes 279 and 280, I ended the episodes with information on the Athletic Scholarship 24-Month Planner and Journal. And those episodes covered the planner section of that book. Today, I start on section 2 of the Planner and Journal, which is the record-keeping tools. To start off the record-keeping section, there are 14 pages to write out questions for coaches and to record the coaches' answers to help you remember important items during your recruiting process. Then there are two pages to record a list of up to 100 coaches that you have engaged with or want to engage with. This 100 coach list can include head coaches, assistant coaches, position coaches, and recruiting coordinators for various colleges and programs. The next record keeping section has 19 pages to record coaches' conversations and interactions. You can keep a log of every conversation and interaction and then transfer the main points of interest to the communications record for that school. I will cover the communication record pages in next week's episode, episode 283. The coaches' conversation and interaction pages have a column to record the date of the event, the coach, and the school, the main points of the interaction, and what your next step is after the interaction with the coach or coaches. Join me next week for episode 283, myth number four, about athletic scholarships. Myth number four is, I can wait until my senior year to look for athletic scholarships. Listen for the truths to help you to get that athletic scholarship. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great new year. And make one of your resolutions to listen every Tuesday to the Athletic Scholarship Podcast for 15 minutes that will change your athletic scholarship future.